I'm going to go right into it and start talking about where claims come from. So right off the bat, we start off with the basis, the premise that everything is contract. Everything is contract. Everything we do, everything we say, our interactions with others, it's all contract. And contract is by consent, meaning we all have a choice to make this contract or to not make a contract. And we make claims every day. Say, for example, if you're late for an appointment and you get there, you know, a half hour late and the person you had the appointment with is like, why are you late? You make a claim of why you were late. <laughs> because you basically uh, violated that contract term by being late. So you see, everything is contract. Everything is a claim. So based upon that premise... Where does this stuff come from? What is the source of it? Let's get to the psychological roots of what's going on here. Where do claims come from? Well, to put it simply, and as, with as much bluntness as I can, you would not exist if I were not sensing you right now and vice versa i would not exist if you were not watching me on tiktok right now for you now, i'm doing this for educational and entertainment purposes only for knowledge cultivation purposes i'm not making a claim for you i'm trying to give you an angle a lens with which to look at this through so you can cognize what i'm saying if I was not sensing what was going on, it would not exist. If I were not here, if I ceased to exist right now, boop, gone, done, finished, kaput, nothing would exist for me because I may only make a claim for myself. And it's the same thing with everyone else. We can only speak from our perspective, our perception, our lenses. So let's say, let, let's put it this way. How do we interact with our environment? We sense it. We have five or more senses with which to interact with external stimuli. Think about the five senses or five plus senses that we have. That's firsthand knowledge. So what happens is, is this stimuli comes into our port of sensation and it docks there, the stimuli. It's raw data. And then we use our biases, you know, our senses, this and that and the third to formulate that raw data into knowledge. We got to cognize it first. We got to cognize those sensations. We got to understand them, get closure on them as best as we can and then we take that data, formulate knowledge, and then transship that knowledge out as claims. In this case, correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar claims as live life claimants, if you are a live life claimant. So that's the basis. And then it's our knowledge, which we formulate from those mechanics. Just going to check on the... Live stats real quick here. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, hey, uh, if you want to share this, go ahead. If, if you know other people that would be interested in this topic. So I've had this, uh, when I would do live streams on YouTube, and I would start talking about actually talking about the grammar like this. My views would drop. But that's okay because I've found in about six years of doing this. 
that very, 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 very few people possess the tenacity and the gumption, the intestinal fortitude to learn this stuff. So the people that actually do are committed and dedicated to learning this, that's who I'm trying to reach. So there's a chance that I might reach someone on TikTok who out of however many viewers I get, whatever that will be, maybe one or two will actually be interested enough in this, inspired enough to actually learn it. That's who I'm talking to. All right, so I'm going to get back to what I was talking about. Okay. So in the grammar technology known as correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, which was bought, brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, we use 10 parts of speech, which I will name for you right now. Zero is conjunction, one is adverb, two is verb, three is adjective, four is pronoun, five is positional, six is lodial, seven is fact, eight is past tense, nine is future tense. Those are the ten parts of speech. Now, when we're talking about correct sentence structure communication, which is one of the three parts of quantum grammar, all right, let's just name those three parts. The first part is what I just said, correct sentence structure communication. The second part is parse. The third part is syntax. And that's all grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure communication, parse, syntax, grammar. In the correct sentence structure communication portion of it, we use four positionals, which, as I just mentioned, and you can see, on this syntax key behind me, if you zoom, zoom in on this window, the part of speech known as the positional, which is given a value of five. There are four positionals, four of, with, and by. If you think of what they call the mathematical interface on grammar, one plus two equals three, 3 minus 2 whoops, equals 1. You see, in this equation, all the factors maintain their value forwards and backwards. Going forwards, a 1 is a 1, a 2 is a 2, a 3 is a 3, and the equals is as equals. Going backwards, 3 is still a 3. 2 is still a 2, equals is an equals, and 1 is 1. But what's different about it? The plus and the minus. That is the function that these positionals serve. For, of, with, and by. They serve the function of the plus and the minus in this analogy. Going forwards and backwards. Each sentence must start with a cause. So every correct sentence structure would start with the positional for, F-O-R. Then the next positional would be of. And then you would put your verb in, as you can see here, which is the thinking, and then the with and the by, the possessive and the authority. Just like plus is congruent with minus and multiplication is congruent with division four is congruent with by of is congruent with with or with is congruent with of by is congruent with four one and one is one rule one rule equal one meaning one word one congruency one function for, of, and then you would put a verb in, and then with and by. Now, keep in mind, folks, I'm just rushing over this really quick because this is very involved, and if you have a notion to study it further, you're more than welcome to check out the 
almost 900 videos available for free on my YouTube channel where I go into much greater depth, much greater detail, and very, you know, long-form videos and things like that explaining this. But I'm just giving an overview. So let's look at a sentence. Look at this sentence right here. This is a what we would term an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble sentence. The facts as written by me, which by all intents and purposes is a complete fictitious conveyance of grammar. How would you translate that into a correct sentence structure? The facts as written by me. What is the main idea of the sentence? What is it a claim of? Is it a claim of facts? Or is it a claim of writing? What takes precedence? I would say in this case, the facts take precedence. So how would you translate that into a correct sentence structure using this scenario? For of, is, with, by. Once again, I'm going to go back to my stream and see... Twoon Soul Media says, are you live? Yes, I am most certainly live. Uh, it should have showed up on your TikTok as me being live. So again, if you want to ask questions, feel free to do so in the chat there. There are no restrictions, uh, so you can ask whatever you want. As long as you're respectful <clears throat> and with the balance of honor and grace. So let's get back to it. If you look at that sentence on the screen, the facts as written by me, how would you translate that into a correct sentence structure using the knowledge that I've just shared with you? How would you do that? Let's add a little bit more. Actually, let's make that singular. Make it easier. For the fact of the fact is with the fact by the fact. Now you see this word, the. This is what is considered to be a lodial, which is given the numerical value of six, as I said uh, a little bit earlier. And then you have your fact. So this is a blueprint that you can use to translate this sentence, the facts as written by me, into correct sentence structure. What you would do is take fact out and then put in your facts as to how you would translate this sentence. You have your positional, your lodial, and now you need to put your fact in. Now, Pasha Williams, as you can see there, you must have two position lodial fact phrases before your verb. You can't just have one. You must have two. For the facts of the facts, and then your verb. You can't just have for the facts are. Otherwise, that voids the mathematical interface. So I will give you an answer. Let me scroll down. 
The facts as written by me, the main idea is facts. So very simply, you could say this. For the claim of the facts is with the writ by the claimant. So the cause of the sentence is the claim. What is the claim concerned with? The facts. You put in your verb of the thinking, your is. Singular, because claim is singular. The plurality or singularity of the verb is completely contingent upon the plurality or singularity of the fact in the cause portion of the sentence. And then you move into your possessive with the writ, which is possessing the facts. And the authority of that writ is the claimant, which would be me, Jason hyphen Matthew colon Glass. Now when you write that backwards, it would look like this. For the claimant, Jason Hyphen Matthew Cohen Glass of the writ, see, two position lodial fracts, again, just like here, but we're doing it backwards, like one plus two equals three, three minus two equals one. For the claimant, Jason Hyphen Matthew Cohen Glass of the writ is with the facts by the claim. So when you go forwards, your claim is your cause. But when you go backwards, the claim becomes the authority. The facts becomes the possessive. The writ becomes the concern, and the claimant becomes the cause. That is the mathematical interface. Now, that's a very simple claim. Now, you can write more complex claims that would give more closure and give, uh, you know, take more jurisdiction over it. You could do this. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the writ with the authorization by the claimant. Jason I and Matthew Cohen Glass, and then backwards that would be For the claimant, Jason Hyphen Matthew Cohen Glass, of the authorization is with the writ of the claim with the facts by the claimant's knowledge. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the writ with the authorization by the claimant, Jason Hyphen Matthew Cohen Glass. So what I've basically said is that the facts come from my knowledge. I'm claiming to write them down. And as author, I am the author because I wrote the facts it's an authorization, and I am the claimant. I've taken jurisdiction over what I've written. And that's the more complex form of correct sentence structure. So you may ask, why 
do you need two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb? Well, you need to establish a geometric level plane field of contract. So in order to do that, you need two points with which to draw a straight line. So you have this point, then you have that point. Now you've established a geometric level plane field of contract. Now you can put your verb in and move on along the same geometric level plane field of contract. Now you can end it there. This right here would be a representation of the first sentence. For the claim of the facts is with the writ by the claimant. This point would represent for the claim. This point would represent of the facts. Then you have your verb, which would be is. And then this point would represent with the writ. And then this final point would represent by the claimant. So on and so forth. If you were to map out this one in the same way, this point would be for the claimant's knowledge. This would be of the facts. Your verb would be is. This would be with the claim. This point would be of the writ. This point would be with the authorization. And then this would be by the claimant period. Just a little bit longer. But as you can see, it's all along the same geometric level playing field of communication. That's why you need two points at the beginning. You need your two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb in order for it to work correctly. Oh, you can't see it because my picture's in the way. Sorry about that. Let me scroll up a little bit so you can see it. There. So that's the basics of how to write a correct sentence structure. I've literally just given you the basics of how to translate any fiction babble sentence into a correct sentence structure. This is actually very similar to what I did in my first seminar back on August 8th, I think it was. I did about a two hour, 45 minute seminar where I gave multiple examples of how to create a correct sentence structure on the spot. Now I will I will now go into a couple other mechanics having to do a correct sentence structure. So the for of with and by as we set up here are the positionals. The is what's known as a lodial. The gives the location of the fact, the fact in this sense being claim. Whose claim is it? My claim, your claim, this claim, that claim, the claim. Claim is your fact. If you are going to use correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, and contracts, you would have to have a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, dictionary, where you give closure to your facts. One word, one meaning. For example, my O dictionary has almost 2,000 words in it, all alphabetized. So you would have to give closure to what F-O-R is, what T-H-E is, what C-L-A-I-M is, what O-F is, what, T -H what 
F-A-C-T-S is, what I-S is, what W-I-T-H is, what W-R-I-T is, what B-Y is, and what C-L-A-I-M-A-N-T is, so on and so forth down the line. You would also have to have a styles manual in there with what your punctuation, closure on those hieroglyphs and things like that. So you become the authority of your construct. And no one can take you... Can, no one can take that away from you. And if anyone wants to contract with you, they would have to agree to your terms and conditions of that dictionary. Or, if you want to work together with someone, with another live life claimant, then you would definitely have to come to joinder with the banking of the values of those facts in that contract that you're in joinder with. And the mechanics that you use. Definitely. <clears throat> so those are the basics of creating a correct sentence structure. Now the other thing I can discuss is the parse. If you notice, there are no particles of negation in my facts. Every fact is positive performance. For example, if I would have put this, is with the written, that's past tense. I would not use that. Or if I put this, with the writing, ing is a particle of negation, it is a gerund modifier. You would not use that in your correct sentence structure because it is modification. Modification is change, change is perjury. So you wouldn't use that. You would only use positive performance words. <clears throat> Another thing, the you see the use of the hyphen here in my name and also in claimant's knowledge the hyphen brings together two facts to form compound facts, two or more facts, actually, to form compound facts. So facts, as we mentioned at the beginning, <clears throat> are given the numerical value of seven. Eton Bailey says, any particular reason your letters are capitalized? And we said, yes, there is. And then they say, does it show that you are the real and living and the words are something else or less important. It's sort of something along those lines. When it comes when it comes down to it, I am the authority of my contracts and my construct. If you want to contract with me, you have to agree with my terms and conditions. If not, we're not going to contract because contract is by consent. So in my dictionary, in my styles manual, Everything has closure. I use capital letters for the ease of the communication. Because when you're writing like this, well, when I'm writing like this, it's just easier to write in all caps. Now, with the live life claim, using correct sentence structure, the letters in the live life claimant's name would be upper and lower case, as you see here. And it does tie into what you said there, B. Tom Bailey, that it shows that it's a live creature, a breathing creature, as opposed to the all caps, which in some jurisdictions denotes a nom de guerre, a dead entity. That's why most tombstones have all cap letters on them. Most driving licenses have all cap letters on them. Passports, all cap letters. Going into shipping and things like that. It shows dry cargo as opposed to wet cargo. Dead cargo as opposed to live cargo. But that has to do with maritime shipping. And while those mechanics 
can be used in congruency with correct sentence structure. It's not actually part of the grammar specifically. But it is a good uh, peripheral study to get into if you want to. What about the brackets you use? I heard anything between four corners is not there, but why? Well, what they mean by the four corner rule, and you can look this up in Black's Law, and I'm not saying Black's Law is an authority of anything. I'm saying that we can use the fiction to certify certain meanings of things that we may or may not use with correct sentence structure. The brackets, yes, it falls under the four corner rule, meaning the four corners of a contract. Looking around for uh, something I can use as an example. Oh, maybe this. All right, so if you see this, what I have here, this is an American Dictionary, the English Language, Noah Webster, 1828 Introduction. <clears throat> you see there is a frame here. What is in this frame is within the frame. What is outside the frame is not the same contract. If you were to write, if there would be stuff written outside here, it's not on the same geometric level plane as what's here or what's here. You see what I'm saying? It's like the same three-dimensional thing in a courtroom where you have levels. You have the sonographer, the clerk, and then on the third master mason level, you have the judge. That's the rule of boxing. That's like when you hear the, when, when a judge says, I can't hear you. They're being literal using that wordplay that they're in a box, just like the jury box. Can't hear or see anything because you're in a box, the four quarter rule. That's why there would be no boxes in correct sentence structure. Now, I use brackets because I know that most of you don't know correct sentence structure. So it would make no logical sense, and it would not be with the balance of honor and grace for me to always communicate using correct sentence structure. Because why would you speak to someone in a language, that, in a grammar they don't understand? So I use brackets. So it's technically not on the page, but you still see it. You can still read it. And I'm still participating with rule one, rule equal. I'm, I'm using plain English to communicate with you, but by putting it in brackets, I'm not participating with adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, bullshit. That's if you put it in italics, it's the same thing. If you put it in quotations, it's the same thing. In cursive, same thing. In any styles manual, any fiction styles manuals that you choose to pick up, it will tell you this. That anything in brackets or rounded brackets, parentheses, italics, etc., etc., it's not on the page not to be considered. It'll paraphrase some of those things. So keep that in mind. That's why when people that use correct sentence structure, they walk into those foreign vessels in dry dock. They will say something like that they're voiding all the boxes and planes and creating a geometric level plane field of contract. Like you see there on the screen, it's a straight line going from port side to starboard side, right to left. You've laid out the path. There can be no misinterpretation. There is no modification. The facts are what they are. Because when you try to enter into boxes and planes, you try to put modification in, then you're adding trickery to the scenario. Now what I do um, with my correct sentence structure contracts, sign the dotted line, same thing. Well, sign, think of the word sign. Sign a signature is is basically no contract because it's not your name. It's certainly not your correct sentence structure punctuated name. It's a sign of that name. 
It's in place of the name. It's a sigil. It's a squiggle. It's cursive. You're cursing. Autograph, correct. The colon Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass is an autograph, which is correct by the standards of correct sentence structure. Now, now, <clears throat> what a lot of people do that don't have closure on grammar is that they'll, they'll take a checkbook or they'll go into a bank and try and open an account and they'll try to use their punctuated name. They'll put their punctuated name on a fiction babble contract. Take it from me. If you autograph your correct name on a fiction babble contract, it does not mean shit. It does not make that contract correct. If you really want to commandeer that vessel, commandeer that contract, and make everything correct, you would have to syntax it, i.e. point out the modifiers, the adjectives and the adverbs, the verbs, the pronouns. You'd have to syntax the whole contract and then rewrite it using correct sentence structure and then autograph your correct name because then you would be autographing a correct sentence structure contract. And I can guarantee you that if you do that at a bank or something, they're, they're not going to participate with that because they're not live life claimants. So there's really no point in doing that. You can navigate every day in the fiction battle system with honor and grace, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal as best as you can. The only time that you would actually use correct sentence structure is if you are being trespassed upon bureaucratically. <clears throat> That's the only time you would use it. <clears throat> well, I mean, unless you know other live life claimants who have a rudimentary grasp of the grammar, then you can come into joinder with them as live life claimants and create biospheres and, and correct sentence structure contracts. But as far as contracting with the fiction using correct sentence structure, it's never going to happen. Well, I shouldn't say never going to happen because I, I've never seen it happen. Let's put it that way. And I've been doing this for six years. <clears throat> Take a driving license, for example, with an all caps name on it. I have commandeered the driving license that I have. I paid the fee for freight, but I've also put a red fox stamp on it, autographed over it with my correct sentence structure name, and I told that as a salvage using my CPAS C-treat and live life claim. Because it's a derelict vessel, because the all caps name has nothing to do with me. I didn't create that name. The birth certificate has nothing to do with me. I didn't create that contract. I didn't authorize that contract. So it has nothing to do with me. That name is somebody else's name that, that they created. I don't want nothing to do with it. I only want... I'm only interested in things that pertain to the things that I create as far as contracting goes. Like the live life claim, the fate writ volition claim, CPAS C treaty, domicile claim. Thank you for sharing the, the, the live, Chris. Appreciate that. Also, I know that it doesn't happen too often or whatever, but if you do value or appreciate what I'm sharing here, I appreciate any donations or gifts that you choose to send. You don't have to, but I do appreciate it. Um, what else? Port authority claim, grammar tutor claim, document contract court authority claim. Any claim you want, you authorize it as the author. 
as long as you have your dictionary and now all your ducks in a row, you're good to go. B. Tom Bailey, I appreciate you, and I thank you for those <clears throat> very uh, interesting questions that you asked. I appreciate your participation. I don't normally get questions like that, but I do appreciate you asking them. It gives me something to talk about. Gives me something to share with everybody. I just had a, I just had an idea. I'm trying to share this YouTube video that I created several years ago. Uh, about the birth certificate. Here you go. Hello friends. This video is going to be a little different than my normal language wow. videos. Look how young I am there. Jeez. And it's just something I wanted to share with the world. Because I'm a naturally curious fellow. I ask a lot of questions. And I seek a lot of closures. And I found some closure on what is known as my personal certification of birth, i.e. my birth certificate. And I'm going to go. All right, folks. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind, this is an old video. This is um, four years ago. So I misspoke there. If I was to make this video now, I would not have chosen those words. Because my birth certificate is not my birth certificate. I would say the birth certificate associated with me, presumed to be associated with me, but it's not mine. I don't own it. I don't want anything to do with it. You see what I'm saying? So I sort of misspoke there. But the content of this video is going to show you that the birth certificate is actually traded on Wall Street and sold. And it is a bill of the lading, basically, that has nothing to do with the name that's on there. Go through the, uh, what I found in this video, step by step. I just pulled out my birth certificate, which is a copy. I don't have the original, but it had a barcode on it. And on my cell phone, I have a barcode scanner. And I scanned it. And then I just... Follow the trail to Evans from there, and you can watch this video and see what I share, the information that I found about my own certification of birth. Hope you enjoy it. Here is my certification of birth from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Health Vital Records. In other words, from a pronoun, adverb, verb, pronoun, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. <laughs> Anyhow, I was adopted, and I, I don't have my original certification of birth. This one was issued on April 30th, 2015. I draw your attention to this number in the bottom right hand corner zero 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 one seven five uh seven five two zero which i will enlarge here zero 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 one seven five seven five two zero that number is also on the back with the barcode barcode qr code reader application on my cell phone so out of curiosity I scanned that number and I clicked the search function, which brought me to this website, sec.report. 
forward slash CIK forward slash the number that was on my birth certificate, 00017575 SEC, of course, stands for Securities Exchange Commission. CIK stands for Central Index Key. So Glentech Limited Liability Company dash series CLY, there's my number. Well, <laughs> it's not my number. There you go. But it's the number that's there on my go. certification of birth. Thank you. So here's some information about the company that is connected to this number. It has an IRS number. It has a reporting file number. State of Incorporation, Delaware. Fiscal year end, 1231. Date of Edgar filing update, 2018-10-30, business address, West Hollywood, California, got a phone number. So here's a document filed. Let's find out what that is. Form D, Securities and Exchange Form D. Uh, Notice of exempt offering of securities. Issuer's identity. This is the name of the issuer. Now here is the number again, 000175-7520. Jurisdiction of incorporation or organization, Delaware. Year of incorporation within the last five years. Limited liability company. Here we go, then all the information, phone number. Now we have a related person. Last name Nagel, first name Levi, no middle name, Sunset Boulevard. Managing member of Glean Capital LLC. First name Capital LLC, last name Glean. <laughs> okay. It's a pooled investment fund, private equity fund. Is the issuer registered as an investment company under the Investment Company Act of 1940? No. Issuer declines to disclose the revenue range. Type of filing, new notice. Uh, does the issuer intend this offering to last more than one year? Nope. Pooled investment fund interest. Uh, so total offering amount, 7,055,000 US dollars. Total amount sold, 7,055,000. That's what the birth certificate's worth as far as I'm concerned. No sales commissions. Signature and Buy submission. Buy birth certificate. Issuer, signature, name of signer, title, managing member. This is all digital too. Huh? And this is uh, my number again. I'm sorry. I keep saying my number. It's not my number. It's Levi's number. It's LLC Glean Tech's number. Uh, yeah, there he is. And... Just more like a summary of all the information. Uh, the director, it looks like, but we have executive officer and director. Relationship clarification. Manager, he's a manager. Pooled investment fund. Private equity fund. Private equity fund. Revenue range. They are not inclined to disclose it. They are not inclined to disclose the revenue range of the certification of my birth. So there you go. That is the uh, closure I've found 
on that number that's on my certification of birth. I'm not passing a judgment on it. I'm just showing you what I found pretty easily. And you could probably do the same if you have the same on your certification of birth. So there's a little bonus material for you, a throwback video over four years ago where I did a little Sherlock Holmes work on the certificate of birth that is associated with me. I highly doubt that uh, that Nagel fellow still has it. I'm sure they sold it for $7 million. 55,000 to whomever. And it's probably worth a little bit more now. But I'm not really inclined to look it up because it has nothing to do with me. It really doesn't. I get a kick out of people that want something for nothing. You get these people that want to think they can tap into that number, that fiat currency number associated with the certificate of birth i don't know anyone first of all who's ever been successful with that i really don't and correct sentence structure would never i don't think help anybody with that because correct sentence structure is about the balance of the honor and the grace the position of peace neutrality and the maintenance of rule one rule equal and trying to take something that you did not create, you did not generate, doesn't fit into those three principles. Things are earned, right? Things are created, earned, so on and so forth. So how is any of that earned? That's like in the fiction system. That's their BS, not mine. So that's why I don't, uh, don't really mess with that stuff. But I know there are people out there that, I mean, who doesn't love free stuff, right? If you think, if I thought that I could get $7 million and $55,000, would I, would I actually go try and get it as far as that's concerned? Probably not. Because I know about the, the rule one, rule equal, and the cycle of karma. I just don't want to get involved in that. I really don't. All right. Special shout out again to B. Tom Bailey for their participation in the chat. If you're watching this, if you're a lurker, don't be scared, homie. Go ahead and comment. Go ahead and ask questions. The first part of this stream was hardcore grammar. I know it's hard for people to grasp that, but you're more than welcome to check out my YouTube channel. The link is in my bio. Click on the YouTube icon, and you can go over there and find all the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, knowledge that you need to at least achieve a rudimentary closure on the grammar. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.